Don Nystrom. The program today will be a holiday focused program and we're going to be talking about some of the events and primarily one big event that's happening in the city during the holiday season. We're all ready for the holiday season because it's been a little dreary and a lot of things have been happening including not least of which is the COVID thing. This particular program is going to focus on a tour of homes that are uniquely decorated for the season. But there are other things going on too. Of course, there's craft shows, there's a Rotary Winter Wonderland, and a lot of other events. So we hope you take in some, if not all of them. And to help me discuss the home tour, we have three guests, one of which is actually a homeowner, and two of which are members of the Alcusa Club. On my far right is Jennifer Lurvey, who is the Vice President of Alcusa, and we're going to skip over Sandy for now <laughs> okay. and talk to Laura Grendel also, who is uh, Vice President, right? I'm the, currently the oh, President. You're the, okay, mm -hmm. got that. That's fine. All right, That's so fine. let's talk about when this is going to happen and what people would expect if they go, and go into the details, which would be whatever okay. like. Um, this is our 10th annual Holiday Home Tour. Uh, it is being held Friday, December 3rd, and Saturday, December 4th. The hours on December 3rd are from 4 to 8 p.m., and on Sunday from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Uh, we have, for nine years, we had home tours every year, but as you alluded to, COVID put a little bit of a kibosh on it last year, uh, so we didn't have the home tour. Uh, but we have uh, brought it back, and uh, we are just really excited. We've got four lovely homes um, to go to, and um, we think that anybody that attends will get all sorts of inspiration as to what they might do in their homes, how they might decorate, and uh, see some very unique items. Okay. Now, <clears throat> why is a Trusa involved in this? What is the purpose? I'm going to ask Jack. The, um Half of the proceeds from this holiday home tour, which is our major fundraiser for the year, will go to the library. And Altrusa's main theme throughout the years has been literacy. So when uh, the library was looking at updating and rebuilding, we said we want to be a part of this. How can we be a part of this? What can we do to raise a, a fair amount of funds to help with that process? So that's when we started with the home tour and we've kept going ever since then. And then now with the proceeds, we designate certain areas of education that we would like the money to go to that we contribute. So just happy to help out the library. It's a good cause. People love it. People love how the holidays. It just seems to fit together really well. And now, let's go with some of the details with Laura Lee. Okay. Uh, what would people expect when they get through the front door? Well, uh, first of all, let's talk about buying some tickets. Oh, let's do that. Let's do that. Um, tickets are $10 a person, um, as long as you buy them in advance. And we have two locations where tickets can be purchased. Um, Mackey has tickets for sale, and the Everett Rail Public Library has tickets for sale. Or if you know an Altrusa member, um, we all have tickets that we would love to sell you. Surprise, surprise. Surprise. <laughs> um, so $10 a person. Um, if you want to wait until that Friday or Saturday, it costs $15 at the door. Okay. Um, when you pick up tickets, if you get them in advance, um, you will get a brochure, um, which looks like this. And in there, um, it will show you or give details about the four homes we have featured. You can go to the homes in any order you'd like. Um, if you'd like to go to two on Friday and two on Saturday, no problem. Okay. Um, so there's no order um, that, that is needed. Um, when you uh, get to the homes, um, you'll give your ticket. Uh, we always ask that uh, people take their shoes off we are hoping uh, for snow on the ground, but not a sloppy night, um, so that our poor homes aren't, uh, we don't have a lot of slushy snow on the sidewalks and all that kind of stuff. Um, but we'll ask you to take your shoes off. We do provide little uh, booties like the medical people wear. 
Um, some people just put their um, shoes in a, a bag that we will provide and they walk in their stocking feet through the homes. Um, as you go through the homes, uh, there will be some altrusins there that will talk about um, certain features that you might want to look at. Um, sometimes the homeowners are there, oftentimes they are also, and they will answer questions. Um, when we talk to the homeowners, they, we tell them that their whole house does not have to be showcased. Um, so for example, sometimes the bedrooms are not um, part of the tour. Um, so there will be, sometimes there will be doors closed, but um, you, you can walk through the areas that are open and our homeowners in the past have been very gracious and so many of them um, decorate the bathrooms and the laundry room and the bedrooms and so uh, it just depends on the homeowner. Um, we are recommending this year that people mask okay. uh, for the home tour uh, because um, we just want to be responsible in regards to, um, to the whole COVID sure. thing. Um, most of the homes you will come in one door and then go out another door and uh, then you can go off to the next home or however you'd like sure. to do it. Mm -hmm. How about uh, like families? Uh, some have little kids, of course. Kids are very, very welcome. Um, uh, we have not had a lot of children that have attended, um, uh, but they are very welcome if they if they would like to attend. Um, yeah, and sometimes um, the homes are decorated in such a way that uh, they're really quite um, I don't know attractive to kids. You know, they've got kind of a oh, sure. kiddish uh, kiddish theme or whatever. Sure. Um, so that's that's not a problem. Um, we've had a lot of um, people that make this a kind of a multi generational event. Um, mm -hmm. So. Mom and the daughters and daughters-in-law and maybe teenage daughters and sometimes and we we get men too. Even they like to look at decorations, sure. or maybe the wife twisted their arm. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> maybe it was no the comment. deal if we go out for a fish fry, we'll go get to the it or something. <laughs> okay, um, so children, if they're you know behave themselves oh, yeah. and the yeah. parents. The parents would be responsible. Oh, yes. yeah. You know, there are people continuously moving into the city, who, mm -hmm. some of which come from faraway places like Alabama. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 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 and they haven't experienced uh, Wisconsin sure. winter slash Christmas season. And mm -hmm. It's a little different up here than I have a daughter in Georgia. And, mm -hmm. You know, she tries to tries to bring the. Wisconsin mm -hmm. decorations and types of things mm -hmm. down there. So mm -hmm. she yeah. comes up for Christmas, takes cheese curds back, and everybody's happy. There you <laughs> go. So, all right, then let's go um, talk with Jennifer. We have a wide variety of homes too when you're talking about that. I mean, you look at um, Dave and Mary Jane Swenson who have farmed their entire life. So, um, very much you'll see Dave's love for John Deere. He has an entire room of John Deere toys tractors and machine it's an equipment mm. let alone the trees that Mary Jane puts in all of the different rooms in her house you know having a theme of farming or woodland creatures or you know so it's interesting to see their background and how they bring that out into their decorating okay. um, even when you say they come from someplace else if they bring that to their decorating in their home also so it's not just necessarily always a Wisconsin home but it might be a totally different home depending upon the person and their heritage and where they okay. came from. So um, some of them just really, you know, have that whatever my, what the, um, what do I want to say, the, your heritage and your grandparents. This is the way my tree always looked when I was a child and this is what I want to bring in to my children mm -hmm. and just carry that down the mm -hmm. whole line. Great. So it's really a very, it's, it's very eclectic. You can get some that are so traditional and some that are so modern. And it's just really nice to see the broad spectrum mm -hmm. of what's all out there. I know one year we had um, a family who doesn't put up a tree. You know, it's all about the stockings and the fireplace. And, and we received uh, comments from people that say, how can you decorate without a tree? That's your tradition? That's your tradition. And mm -hmm. it's just good to see how different people spend their holidays and enjoy sure. their holidays. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And you have three other... We have, total we have a total of four homes. Right. Sandy's is one of them. Right. 
Um, I really have not seen the other homes. I'm as a committee member. I host Dave and Mary Jane, so I have a little bit more background on theirs. But um, each of them have some unique characteristics that are in our brochure. Mm -hmm. Dave and Mary Jane's home is new. I yes. think it was built in 2019. As are, is the Schmidt's home, um, and Shalisa Schmidt, the hostess there, is um, the art teacher in one in the school district, and. Uh, so she has indicated that her home might be um, a little non-traditional. So I'm excited. I haven't seen her decorations either, but that'll be great. All right, let's talk okay. about the next home that's down the door. Okay, um, so Dave and Mary Jane Swenson's home is a new home built in 2019, um, as is the Schmidt home. Um, their home is located um, south of the fairgrounds and um, Shalitha Schmidt is one of the art teachers in the school district. So I haven't seen her decorations, but she said they may not be as traditional as some others. So I think it might be a very interesting home to go to. Uh, the other, the third home is um, Phil and Gail Sheely, and they live on Arlington, and they have an older home. Um, it was built in um, 1935, um, and she has a um, collection of Campbell's Soup stuff that is just extraordinary, plus this beautiful home with its beautiful woodwork. Um, she has some very nice old traditional uh, pieces also. So um, they all are going to be different, and of course our last home oh. is the Eggston home. No. <laughs> so we're going to go down and talk about the process of Sandy Eggstead getting involved with this and putting on a program, part of the program. So let's talk with um, Jennifer. Huh? Well, finding our homeowners is always a challenge for us to find pe for people who are willing to open their homes because sure. you're asking them to do a lot to you know allow people to come through their home and maybe to start decorating a tad bit earlier than they maybe normally would since we're usually um, the first weekend in December where we hold our home tour. So. It's all about knowing people who are willing and interested in opening their home, who love to decorate for Christmas. So if anybody fits that bill, we'll be taking your name for next year's, possibly. So, but Sandy, maybe you can tell us how, who, who's twisted your arm to come just, <laughs> <laughs> Well, I belong to an organization that has an, an early Christmas party in early December, so my house is often decorated early. And uh, one of the people, one of my um, club's members mentioned to one of the Altrusa members that my house was decorated what they, what they thought was nicely. So um, my name was given to them and then someone from Altrusa contacted me to see if I would be interested. And they came to see the house and said, I think Laura said, there's plenty to gawk at here, so oh, we'll, we'll, we'll be good. <laughs> Wonderful. So what have you done to decorate it? I, of course, I know your husband quite well. I know yes. he's really handy. Right. With tools and stuff. So what's, well, what's unique about your home? We have a raised ranch house, which means we have two levels. And the lower level is Leroy's, my husband's. And uh, there will be a tree down there uh, that is decorated with ornaments that he has made through the years. We um, looked at the date, and the oldest one we could find is 41 years old. So he's been making uh, basically a different decoration each year. And um, so many of them that uh, six of each one are now allowed to go on the tree because that's all there's room for. For a time when I was teaching, he made uh, little bear, puzzle bear ornaments that I would give to the students um, as well as some other things. So that's, um, that's quite rustic in our lower level. Um, and you will see that, that uh, he has collected tools and there are antique tools hanging on the walls and on some of the shelves. Um, also, you'll see some of his handiwork because he is, he is, he's quite skilled with, with wood and other things. Um, and also downstairs there is a collection that I began a long time ago and my husband and daughter increased it. It's a cloth teak Santa Clauses mm -hmm. that are down there. Um, but basically the downstairs is, is his domain and it has a lot of things in it that he has made and uh, that reflect his interests. It's a great hobby that he has. As yes. most people know, he was a barber for many, many, yes. many years. 
He learned how to cut things, mostly hair. <laughs> <laughs> then he moved into the, or he's probably always been in woodworking. Right. He has always been into um, wood. When you enter our house, there's an old dresser that he refinished when he was a teenager. Mm. And we still have. So, And there's also in our foyer a bench that he made. So you will see his handiwork in lots of places in the house. Well, we've uh, learned a little bit about the downstairs, which Leroy has been intimately involved with. Yes. What else do you have in your home that might be of interest? Well, the ladies have spoken about that there are very many different styles of homes um, and different decorations. Well, our house is an example of different styles in itself because the upper level is uh, not rustic at all. It's kind of gleam and glass and silver. And um, another collection that I started doing, I started with a very small tree with um, spun glass ornaments and it has grown to be an entire tree and it's filled with glass and crystal ornaments. And so it's quite different um, than it is downstairs. And then there's also a collection of angels that I've made throughout the years and um, some other things as well. So it's a house that has two very different styles in it. Well, as we've been discussing each home is unique. If you see one, it's not going to be the same as the next mm -hmm. one. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, to rehash, we can get tickets at Mackie or from one of your members. Or the, the library. library. Or uh, the, the library, because some of the money you raise goes there. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. And uh, it's, again, it's on the December third. Friday night, night. December 3rd, <laughs> yeah, from 4 time. to 8, and then Saturday, December 4th, from 10 to 2, you can go to the homes in any order. You can split them, up, split them up into two days or try to get to all four in one day. If you go in on two different days, you keep your ticket. You keep your ticket. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, That's I think I, I wish you a lot of success. Thank it you. sounds very, very interesting, and I Thank hope you. that you get a, a nice crowd. And we hope for good weather, mm -hmm. like yeah. dust and snow, but not real mushy. <laughs> yeah, right? there you go. Right. There Same you go. as and, the, Park down mm -hmm. there, we, we don't. No uh, ice. <laughs> no, no ice. ice no ice. <laughs> no ice. <laughs> no ice. <laughs> no ice. Well, uh, congratulations mm -hmm. on organizing this again for another year, and let's hope you get real good attendance. Mm -hmm. Now, before we close, put in a plug for Altrusa because a lot of people don't know about Altrusa. I didn't until we did this program a mm -hmm. couple years ago. Okay. Altrusa is an international organization, uh, and we have had a chapter, Jennifer, since 83. Two, maybe? Mm -hmm. 1983. Two or three. Um, we have about 30 members in our organization, and as, El as Jennifer had said before, Altrusa's main focus is literacy. So we do a variety of fundraisers so that we can then give the money out. Um, and Holiday Home Tour is our, our largest fundraiser. Sure. Um, when you look at things that not only do we donate to our library here, we do donate to local area libraries, Vesper, Arpen, mm -hmm. Pittsville, um, some of their summer programs that they have. We can help support those um, so that they can continue to do those types of things. Um, we also um, look at scholarships. We have a scholarship through the Community Foundation that we provide for a non-traditional student because mm -hmm. we were looking for to help those who are going back in getting their education or advancing their education once they've already been out in the working world. Sure. So those are, I think, our major literacy um, projects that we do right now. But we also do service in the community. So we help with the Nutrition on Weekends program. Um, we provide meals for the Respite Care Center on a monthly basis. We help set up and take down for Winter Wonderland. So there's are things that we can do in our time in, in helping our community in other ways besides just the financial raising money and providing money to those who need it. Well, do you have any other fundraisers other than the tour or is this your main source of revenue for, to sponsor the things that you just discussed? It's by far our main fi okay. fundraiser. Um, we, do, we do sell ruby red cranberries in the fall now. It's um, uh, an organization in Rapids and they sell all different cranberry products. Yeah. So um, unique to Wisconsin, I think, and to the area. So that's always been a, a fairly good fundraiser for us. When COVID hit and we were no longer able to do the holiday home tour, we looked for alternate types of fundraisers. So we keyed into festivals brought fries. And so <laughs> 
the year that we couldn't do the um, home tour, we were still able to do a nice financial donation to the library through the Brat Fries at Festival. And Good. some of our members really enjoyed that, so I think we might continue to do that also. Oh, but. Well, it's great that it's an organization that doesn't have a high profile, but it's a very active group. The yes, things that you yeah. do support the community and particularly the things I'm interested in too, which is literacy. Mm -hmm. So uh, congratulations on keeping it going despite the efforts we mm -hmm. couldn't get into last year. Yeah. And uh, before we close, I'm just going to put in a plug for my special project, which okay. is <laughs> Rotary Winter Wonderland. With your permission, you it's, a, it's a really great show again this year. I did have a preview and they've got new exhibits, new more light, and they go further that way and further that way. And so if, even if you've seen it in the past, you're going to see something different this year. So I hope that people that are as interested in, in what you're doing with the home tour is also interested in going down to the park and taking a peek. The money there, of course, raised goes for the food pantry. So everybody in town is contributing in some way or the other. And um, mm -hmm. we hope that both your program and the one that it's close to me is um, successful again this Absolutely. year. So I thank, I, agree. I thank the three of you for coming in thank you. and telling okay. us about it. And we wish you much, much success. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. I'm Don Neistrup, and this program has been about the holiday tour of homes, which is on December 3rd and 4th. <laughs> right? I got it. That's thanks. it. Thanks for watching, folks. <laughs>